Yo, big up yourselves, welcome back. Welcome all the new subscribers. We've had a, well, I'll say a big jump, jump in subscribers and uh, we're nearly at 3,200 now. So big up all your new subscribers, big up all the existing subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the content that we're putting out there. Scott's making a, a racket in the back. Were you packing in, mate? <sighs> Sorry. Sorry about that. He's just getting the tools in. So on today's video, we are wiring a kitchen, but in this kitchen, we're gonna be talking about why we choose to wire ring final circuits and not radial circuits in a kitchen area. Uh, we'll get into a bit more of that when we get in there. So yeah, big up yourselves, big up all the members, big up the subscribers, big up everyone who's commenting. If you don't comment normally, leave a little comment, even if it's just something soft, just if you can do that to help us um, with the algorithm and things like that. The more likes, the more comments we get, the more YouTube throws our videos out to different people who might not have seen the channel before. So yeah, if you can do that, that would be fantastical. Let's get in there and check out the job. Run the ting! Right, we're in the job now. Scotty, you gonna speak? Jackie. Nice, that was good. Here's the plan for the kitchen that we're doing. So we've got down here is our fuse, but you can see it. Down here in this opening is our fuse board on the wall. I'll show you that in a minute. This is basically a fridge that's gonna slide in. We've got the boiler here, electric hob, which is gonna need its own feed, single oven underneath, extractor up there, and then washing machine down here. Couple of sockets, high level. So this is where we're, the magic's happening. We've got the builders here making a noise for me. Cheers. Because we're doing some work, right guys? <laughs> so here's the fuse board that we've got. We've got an RCD providing protection for the sockets. We've got a cooker circuit, we're gonna get rid of that. A shower circuit, we're gonna get rid of that because they're doing a new bathroom in there without an electric shower. So this is the feed to that. It's all gonna be ripped out and it's trunk through the hallway. We've got a tidy up, central heating because when they've done it, I've changed the boiler and just wagoed it onto there. So we'll get that changed and probably, to be fair, we'll probably leave it there. We'll bring the spur up above the worktop there. Nice. This is gonna go and go in a cupboard underneath, probably over here. It's a downstairs flat. So what we're gonna have to do is trunk wipe the way around the room and then chop the walls out, pop out the trunk in and up to our socket points and ting it like that. There's no undercovered lighting going in. Nothing happening with the lights and we're gonna do as little damage to the ceiling as we can. All we're gonna do is probably break an hole out just so we can pull the old legs up and then join them in a wago box above. Nice. When you finish, lad. When you finish, lad. When you finish, lad. So we've stripped out the original um, wiring. Cooker switch we've got rid of. Socket, socket, we've disconnected for now. But the ring goes straight the way through this kitchen, low level, and into the other room. Sorry about that noise, they're, they're working low. So it goes, we think, from the board to the first socket under there, over to the second socket, and then through to the lounge. But there is a socket spurred off which comes from the lounge back up to here, which I've disconnected in there. So, so far, everything's dead. We've got to rewire the boiler spur because that's not very accessible down there. And then we'll start getting our new cables around. Scott's marked up where we want the sockets. So we're gonna have two on this wall, one over there, and we have got low levels for appliances. So the reason we pull a ring into the kitchen area and not so much into the bedrooms, things like that, is just because of the loading. So in here is the majority of the power that you're gonna draw in your house. So you've got your kettle, your washing machine, things like that. Anything with a heating element is gonna draw exactly what it says. Your cooker, you can use diversity for because nine times out of 10, you're not gonna have it all blasting, all rings on at the same time. So you can use a calculation to drop down to a lower wattage. Uh, but obviously Christmas day, it's all gonna be on but things like your washing machine. When your washing machine's drawing water, when it's draining, things like that, it's not gonna use the maximum. But when it's drawing it, if it's got a heating element in it, the heater's gonna be drawing what it says. If it's a three kilowatt washing machine, you're gonna be drawing that three kilowatts. 
So most of the loading, with it being on plug tops in here, your kettle's the same, your kettle's instant draw, it's gonna draw full bollock, everything. Extractor, not so much loading on that. Um, single oven, normally plug-in, sound, that's the same, it's gonna have the heating element, it's gonna draw the power it wants, when it wants. So that's why we use a ring in here, because you've got the 32 amps. People use four mil radials, things like that, but we tend not to use them, just because if in the future anything needs to be spurred off, it's hard to spur off if there's two four mils already in there. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean, Scott? Oh, you mean big boy? He knows, Dewey. So yeah, we're gonna be pulling a ring round, so we'll go low level, trunk right round the room, and then we'll break into the plaster. In these walls, it's not so bad. This wall's gonna be terrible because it's an egg crate wall. Don't know what they're called, Paramount maybe, but they've got the little egg crate crisscross. I'll break one out and show you. So the whole inside of the wall is made of like that, little cardboard, like you find in an egg crate. So yeah. We'll get them marked out now. It's got to cut the first one out. We're gonna cut these out. These are fast fixed, like I say. That one's still got the void behind, but there is block behind. So hopefully we can just break a hole at the bottom and fish up to the sockets. We've marked out center of our hob for the extractor fan. And yeah, all the switches, sockets, things like that for low level appliances are gonna go in the cupboards next to them like we always do. Here's the culprits look, making all the noise while I'm trying to film. Beast you busy lads, eh? Busy in lots of sparkies. Yeah, you don't be like that. <laughs> Just wanted to show you quickly, this is that egg crate sort of stuff which I was on about. So I've cut the box out and then I've cut this one out the same. All you have to do then is just literally break the insides out and pull them out. And then what we'll do is cut a hole down there which we can rod up and then we'll put something hard like I don't know, what would we put through? The rods normally, and it just breaks through these cardboard things straight the way down to the bottom so that we can tape on and come up. Some of you might not have seen these walls before, that's why I just thought I'd, I'd show you. So with these walls, this is what I was saying about getting down. Basically a rod or a bit of trunking lid or something like that. And it just rams down and breaks out the little cardboard in the line. So you're still in the zone and every tin like that. So we'll get these broke out on here and on that one. And then we'll break a little hole underneath so that we can fish our cables up to this point and then put our fast fix in. Nice. Just wanted to show you this bonding that we're doing. So 10 more bond. Little bit of heat shrink, bonding, uh, what's it called? Crimp on the end. What's it called? Pass that crimper, Scott. Crimper with a 10 mil bit in. Then we're gonna push that through and crimp down onto that, like this. And then we'll get the heat gun. Look at that. And everything and then we'll just heat that up. This heat shrink is a bit big to be fair, but. <laughs> now that crimps on, that heat shrink's not the best at all. Really loose, but basically you get the idea. And then that screws down onto your clamp. So this is the water bonding done. We've got to get the gas bonding in, which is the other side of the room. And these will run round and round and down. Nice. Look at this. Oh, what are you doing with that, Scott? What's all this yellow, Jack? Oh. oh. Jack dropped a drum of 10 mil, look. Smashed his, smashed his bloody pot, day. Eh? Bossed it everywhere. Right, socket, socket. That's our last leg of the ring. We've come round, down the bottom of the room, Across, we've got to tidy these up still, and then it goes through into that box in, over to the top of the board. We can put a bit of trunking on that when we come back. And then our first leg comes across, up, 
into that socket, up and then across to keep it in the zone for the extractor. And then the two 1.5 cables, one goes out up there, one goes out over there, there for the outside lights. So there's gonna be two spurs in this little unit here. One's gonna do the extractor, one's gonna do the outside lighting. I'll show you why in a minute, because it was all lashed in. Boiler spur on there, all our cables back to there. Six mil coiled up there, so that'll go into the unit to supply the hob. We'll also have either a socket in there for the oven, or we'll just pull a 2.5 to there if it needs it. It's all covered in stuff so we can't see the writing. Gas bond, we've had to put on in here. That's because after this, it turns onto like a steel pipe where it goes outside. So we just put it on the first bit of copper that we could. Uh, yeah, and that's coming into the property. It only feeds this boiler anyway, so it's literally a couple of metres of copper and it's in. The water bond, showing you that, we come round and down to the stop tap there. That doesn't really need one because it's a plastic incomer, but I just thought while we're here, we might as well chuck it on so it's all done and fresh. Nice! We'll get tidied up and then show you how we got rid of the sockets. So when we come back and second fix this, we've got to change that light, but we've just come in to have a look. Don't know what that is. And then this is hanging out the pull cord. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Whether they've just pulled an earth in because the shower used to go there, pull cord on the ceiling there, and then down obviously to the shower there. So I'm gonna have to take that off and have a quick look what that is and get rid if we can. So if you can see that, that single that goes in, it's just connected onto the um, switch wire coming out. So we'll take this out and put our, uh, our earth back into the earth terminal and then that gets rid of this nice cable coming out the wall. So just quickly, that socket that was existing, which was a radial off, we go in here, I'll take my shoes off because I've just done the floor. That's where it was coming from. So we've got our ring in live, ring in neutral, and then our earth. I don't know what I'm saying, ring in. It's in and out, isn't it? Um, so what we'll do is this one was going off to that socket. So we'll get rid of that out of there and then put the socket back on or we'll change the socket when we come back. We'll see how much slack we've got and what we can do with it. But yeah, that'll join the ring back up and then we'll be back as we were. Here's what we've done with our old ring connections because like I said earlier, they, they go through the room. We've just had to put them in Wagos and blank them off. There's only them two and then it carries on right the way around. So whatever zone it was in, it's still in because the blanks are there. So the blanks are covering us for that. Nice, this cable, we've still got to fix that onto the corner around the room, but um, we're going to broom up get all the stuff out first and then our other cables are there ready to go. We'll call the ones we're not using up in the board, connect the new boiler up and get the bonding in and on because it's connected either end. So yeah, we'll have a tidy up now and I'll show you these outside lights. So here's the outside lights I was telling you about. That flex runs right the way around. There's another one out the back there and then they came down the side of the drain pipe there and into the board. So. We've rewired them. That's our one feed coming out the wall there, and there's another one at the back. So it'll be a bit neater when they uh, when we get rid of them. We can rip all these down now, but we'll probably just do it on the second fix, get rid of all the cables, make it nice. So that 
is another job well done. There wasn't a lot we could record because the place was rammed. The plumber came, two builders, us two, trying to get a kitchen done. It doesn't always work, so that wasn't the plan for the video, but we move. The aim of the video was to just tell you why we... you. I thought that was an armrest, <laughs> it was his arm. Well, it was an armrest resting oh. on his arm. Uh, the aim of the video was just to tell you why we use ring final circuits for different situations. With an upstairs, you'd probably use a radial. Downstairs, a radial. Kitchen, you'd use a ring. Because, again, the loading in the kitchen's massive. In a bedroom, in a front room, you're only really going to have tellies, routers, stuff like that. You might have an electric fire, but, again, it's just off a spur. It's not really a massive load. So the kitchen, you've normally got washing machine, dishwasher, cooker, things like that. So we put it on a ring mount, 32 amps, get the full amount in there because you're going to be using it. So hopefully the videos help people out. It might not have, might have been a disaster. So will let me know when she uh, edits it. So hopefully. You got anything to add, Scott? No, what she said. You've covered it all, mate. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. I do, I do try, you know what I mean? Yeah, big up for watching. Leave a little like if you like the video. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If we did cover what you basically need to know, then let us know. But I won't know till it goes out there. But big up for watching, big up for coming back. Press that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the bell, get notified when we do these videos. And give us a share as well. Put us on your Instagram, whatever. Follow us on Instagram as well. That would be nice. We do talk to quite a few people on there in the messages and things like that. If people need help, sometimes they message Scott. Don't message me, but message Scott. Scott knows. Hey, mate. Right. Don't talk too much, mate. All right. Cut the middle one out. <laughs> Straight to the gaffer. Nice. Yeah, big up yourselves. Uh, Scotty. Is that in there, mate? Yeah, just right in front of my face, mate. Too much shite everywhere. I oh, know. See you later. Ta-ra. Yeah.